So today we're we're digging into how and why the panel here, the growers, um, how and why can these handbooks they have written crank up their farm crews. Some stories from Hank Bissell, Lewis Creek Farm, Lisa Medugal, Mighty Food Farm. And oh, I forgot to change Silas's uh, to his mom, Evgeny, who will uh, present from Last Resort Farm. And my name's Hans Estrin, and I am the VGA CAPS coordinator and a produce safety specialist from UVM Extension. Okay, so we're going to jump right in to the panel uh, who will present approximately 10 minutes each. And that will uh, then lead us into a share, a time to share round robin, and we'll close with an intro to the farm labor dashboard uh, by Beth Holzman, who's here from the Center for Sustainable Agriculture. And and uh, before you split, you'll do a little eval, and I'll make an announcement. So let's jump into it. Got our panel. We're jumping right in, um, sharing around the room here, and then a closing with. Uh, Beth Holston. Okay, so so let's go hop right to Eugenie from Last Resort Farm, who will uh, talk a little bit about their employee handbook and the story behind that. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Hans. So uh, I am Eugenie Doyle, co-owner and former manager of Last Resort Farm in Moncton. Um, it's a uh, 265 acre certified organic, real organic farm um, and uh, that my husband and I started first as a dairy farm. It's now organic uh, berries, vegetables and hay. And our one of our sons is um, managing it and uh, we'll, as soon as he finishes paying it off, we'll be the owner. Um, so the question is um, why have an employee handbook? Um, and I would say that one of the things that has characterized our farm in the past few years is this transition. And our um, interest in doing a handbook came partly from uh, the need to kind of clean up all sorts of um, un unwritten uh, agreements and uh, policies as we were handing management over to Silas so that we would all be on the same page. I think having an employee handbook is probably the easiest of all of those um, policies, written things um, that is is available to us as, um, as farmers. Okay, so um, yeah, as I said, I think doing a handbook is really relatively easy and has enormous benefits for both both the um, managers, the farmers and the employees. And it, the reason it's easy is that so many people have done it. We took as a template um, river berries. Uh, so thank you, Jane and Dave. Um, and we adapted it to our own use, but there are some things in it in terms of um, the kind of outline that you can use, that anybody can use on their farm. And you can just abbreviate some things, leave some things out. Um, our goals in doing this was to establish common ground for all of our crew. We have full-time people, we have part-time people, we have part-time high school students, we have part-time retired, almost retired people. We have uh, H2A employees. So we have quite a range of employees who have their own agreements with us and in the case of, case of H2A contracts with us. Um, the handbook is one way of everybody having one written kind of a place to have, have everybody on the same playing field because everybody, when they are employed, when they agree to employ, they get a copy, digital copy of the handbook, which they read hopefully and have to sign off that they have read. Um, ours has a mission statement, uh, general farm information, um, personnel policies, description of workman's compensation, um, various legal statements, being this being an, an at-will employer, a, a, a harassment policy and um, um, a sexual harassment policy and an accident policy. So those are our categories but I think every handbook can be different. 
for our crew, um, the book uh, spells out resources, um, all sorts of resources. Um, I think some are more important to some employees than to others. For our uh, the the field crew, the production managers, we we have well in the in the handbook is a link to maps of our farm. Um, it had become clear to me at one point that some employees could work here for a whole season and never have been to certain fields. We don't have everything right by the farms. Some we have to drive away. So having in the, the uh, handbook where things are um, became very important. Uh, for the wash pack crew, having a link in the handbook to our, um, our food safety policies, our um, missions and goals around quality control and food safety, which is very important to us. Uh, having that, a link to that was very important and uh, for everybody kind of uh, is in addition to the actual food safety training that they get. Um, for some of our high school students, having a link to um, the health policies about first aid and where things are in terms of um, EpiPens and Band-Aids and gloves and stuff like that, which turns out to be very important. They're very accident prone, we, we found. Um, having a link in the handbook to mental health um, resources. There's a link in there to uh, Farm First and the mental health resources that they provide uh, free of charge to farm workers um, has proven it to be quite helpful, I think, to a lot of people. So um, I think uh, other than that, those are the main reasons. Oh, the other thing is uh, sort of what's, what is the, what's the kind of tone of our uh, farm? The handbook establishes who people are, who are the owners, who is the manager, and what is important to them. Our punctuality is enormously important to Silas. Um, and I think it's in our handbook probably three or four times. Um, and uh, he also established this little graphics that you, that you see up on your screen of sustainability with um, the three underlying uh, pillars of fun, growth for every employee and efficiency. And uh, having those repeated, those are it's also posted in our our uh, crew eating area in our office, but um, it reinforces that those are things that are very important to him and um, what exactly those mean. So um, I would say then the main thing, you know, these are all really great things for everybody to be aware of. And then um, the challenge is to have people read this. So I think we will, um, when people do sign that they read it, I think we will also uh, start probably printing off and putting copies in with different lively graphics in uh, the staff area, lunch area, things like that. Because um, having, people, having a policy is one thing, having it actually be read and discussed um, is another, it's a constant challenge. Um, I, okay, I think those are the main things that I wanted to cover, and I'm happy to take any questions. Great, thanks so much, Eugene. Yeah, we got we have uh, a couple minutes here. If there are one or two questions, and I don't know if anyone put, feel free, people who are here to throw stuff in the chat or as you're going, um, or if someone wants to just raise their hand and ask a quick question here before we move on to thank the cell from Lewis Creek. I could just add that our entire policy is eight pages long. So this is not a huge tome. Great. Do you do, I have one quick question then Jay, before we move on, if no one else was there. Um, do you do any uh, discussion about this um, currently? Like, uh, you know, what, what, what were any takeaways from reading the thing and like having a, you know, just a meet in a crew meeting or anything like that? Have you done that? And as, as, uh, in the yeah, we, um, we do, we, well, we talk about it. Um, we talk about the handbook kind of in general at our introduct 
time, but of course not everybody starts at the same time. So we uh, refer to it at, um, we have morning meetings, uh, which most people are at, except for the afternoon part-timers. Um, and we do talk about aspects of it constantly. And, and things, things come up, you know, uh, maybe somebody will be leaving and um, that, or somebody will, you know, want to take a vacation in July or something like that. And so the areas in the handbook that reference those contingencies um, are discussed with the, with the whole crew, with the whole group as it's, as it's pertinent. And it has a bit of work in progress or a, a more static document. Are you adding things in response to the stuff that comes up? Yeah, we, we uh, renew it every year. So we do go through it every year. The, the idea of putting in the links to our food safety plan and to uh, maps is new this year. I think, I mean, we became uh, real organic after, you know, several years uh, in addition to certified organic, that was added to the um, to the handbook. Um, I think you know there are other things. Well, of course, we did our handbook before COVID, so this the handbook was a kind of a basis for our policies during COVID. But but uh, we added many things to the employee handbook as a as a kind of separate health policy, COVID policy. Uh, but at least we had we had a basis for uh, a management employee document uh, to play with. Thanks. All right. Becky, anything in the chat before we jump jump on? And we may want to just move to Hank and see if we can hit some of this stuff later too. But um... it looked like there was Vern had a question. Is it a hard copy? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes, it is a hard copy. It, it's sent out to everybody digitally, but there are hard, everybody also has a hard copy. I mean, I have to say probably in general, most people don't take the hard copies, pretty much just the older people and the high school kids <laughs> in between there. They've all read it. And so, I want to move on. Uh, but I guess Missy had texted here. I'm now reading the chat about a cell phone policy and um, any policies around owners, kids, and maybe what we could do is um, move on and any of the other harms or Eugenie could jump in to um, on that later. Um, but uh, feel free to address that um, as we go through this. And Missy, you'll have time, right? Well, we're doing a round robin discussion. So this some of this stuff can come back up um a little bit later uh let's move on to lewis creek farm starts for vermont and hank is here um thanks for joining us hank and look forward to hearing your story here behind your handbook uh, uh so uh the, the one of the last things uh eugenie said was it's only eight pages so it's not a tome i was gonna say Ours is just so onerous. It's eight pages long. <laughs> so everybody's got a different idea what's appropriate. Um, you know, uh, I've got notes here. Hans has some idea of what I, he wants me to cover. Uh, but, uh, you know, we all learned something in high school that was not on the syllabus. And uh, what I, I was a very slow reader. And so what I learned how to do was to uh, discuss books I haven't read. Um, and so I'm just gonna extemporize, shoot from the hip, talk off the cuff, uh, make it up as I go along. Uh, 30 years ago, someone said, you know, you really ought to have an employee handbook. You ought to have termination policies. You ought to have, you know, and. At, at that time, the entire veg, uh, vegetable industry was sort of running, un, flying under the radar. We didn't really exist. Uh, and so I said, crap, well, that's not gonna happen. Anyway, probably one of the first things we did was uh, it, what I call essential information for new employees. 
It's a, uh, it, at that time, it was a sheet of paper that had just the essential stuff, you know, uh, arrive on time. You're going to have to fill out an I-9 and W form, W-4 form. So bring a license and uh, a social security card and what we do for lunch breaks. And uh, you really need rubber boots. Um, and uh, so basic stuff like that. And this, and I, and I'd send it out to people um, who were about to start. And slowly, we've added bit by bit, uh, you know. And and really, it's a spectrum of uh, of of different things. You know, there's the obligatory statements like the non-discrimination clause, and and there's rules, hard and fast rules, and there's uh, information about uh, compensation, and there's not rules, but guidelines, and there's uh, advice, and, and just customs we have around the farm. So it's just, you know, it's just so many things you want to tell the employees, and they come up over the course of the season, they become relevant, one thing or another. And so, uh, Really, it's, it's all just there. Um, and uh, so the question is, how are you going to write one of these things? You know, um, I say, start with what's important to you. What are the things, what's the thing you're constantly telling your employees? You know, maybe you want a, a someone was asking about a cell phone policy. You know, 15 years ago, was it 15 years ago? Anyway, uh, cell phones were were just the latest outrage uh, to uh, manual laborers. And the idea that these kids are on their cell phones all, all the time, you know, and, and so we had a fairly strict cell phone policy at that time. Um, and now, I don't know. Everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody, all the Jamaicans have cell phones. All everybody's got a cell phone, and uh, we use them as walkie-talkies. You know, and if I have something to say to someone, I say get uh, ten more cases of cabbage from the field. I just call them on their phone. Uh, so my attitude towards cell phones has changed dramatically, um, and uh, I every year. I read through what we have for an employee handbook and just see, does it make sense? It's a pretty quick read. And uh, does it make sense? Have we, have things changed enough? I'll, you know, sometimes, most of the time it's just adding a comma, adding a little thing, but, but, it, but it keeps it up to date. So you're gonna start with what's important to you what they really, what you feel the employees really need to know, what you want them to know. And, uh, and then don't forget the obligatory statements. You really should have a non-discrimination clause in it. It's good to have a uh, mission statement in there. You, you really should have a sexual harassment policy. Uh, what's your sick time policy? Uh, workers comp. And this is very dry reading. Uh, however, things like the mission statement, if you haven't written a mission statement, it is a cool thing to write. It is fun to think about what the heck am I doing here? And uh, I really had a, I really enjoyed writing the sexual harassment policy and just thinking through what is, uh, you know, as a white male, um, sexual harassment, uh, is, is not a, uh, it's not a thing that's foremost on my mind. Uh, and so to think that through was, uh, was good. Uh, you know, what's your sick time policy? Uh, all those things, um, were, were actually a lot of fun to think about and write. You know, don't forget the obvious stuff, like, what day is payday? Um, and, uh, you know, 
And so I just add to it one issue at a time. You know, you get to some point in the middle of the season and say, oh, I should have told the employees that. So you write a little thing, add it to your, uh, to your handbook. Um, and uh, so, so it, in my mind, I mean, Hans probably wants you to write the whole thing uh, this winter. Uh, but it, it, in my mind, it, it can be a work in progress just as your business grows, as things change, as you get more employees, you find that you really need to share uh, more and different things. Um, some of the, the, you know, the, the rules you ought to cover is uh, what your... Uh, termination policy is and uh what what kind of discipline there is you know how many notices are people gonna get and uh you know if if, it, it, if you've ever had to fire someone it is a traumatic experience i the first time i fired someone i felt like i needed to go into therapy for three months at least it was uh it was a very difficult Thing. So having something spelled out is a good idea. Um, you know, in, in terms of compensation, what day is uh, payday? Uh, what uh, the, the, the withholding is going to be? Um, that you're covered by work, work, workers' comp. It's a good idea to explain what that means sometimes. Uh, sometimes people don't realize that. They're covered by workers' comp and what situations. Uh, um, and uh, then we do have people, uh, we, while we have it online, you can find it on our website. Um, we do have people on the first day that they, they work, they read through the entire thing and sign that they've, uh, that they've read it. And some bureaucrat somewhere said you really should have them sign every page oh for crying out loud uh and so we do have them initial each page as they finish reading that page and then at least you know they've read it and they're not memorizing it they're not going to remember all these things but when something comes up they might say oh right that was in the employee handbook. And then it's online. They can look it up on the phone and, and see, what did he say about that? So I think as uh, Eugenie said, that having it available digitally is important now, uh, sort of essential. So wrap up we, in a we wrap up in a minute. It's been great. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> Thank you, um, Hank. That really that was entertaining and um, insightful too. The starting starting small important things. Um, really, I think Eugenie kind of talked about that too. Um, at least in between the lines, um, I did. Pooh Pooh is here, who is, also has like tremendous experience and had a quick question about uh, which we can, if someone knows a quick answer uh, about, does the state of Vermont require um, a farm safety plan? I'm assuming that's like an OSHA related plan. Um, and if so, mm -hmm. place. And Beth, you might be able to answer that quick. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think so. I mean, I go to enough meetings. I would think I would have heard about that. I, I don't think so. I don't know, actually, but we can find out for sure. Yeah, that would be good I, to know. I don't know either. I don't know either. <laughs> from, from my experience, I think that. Um, this is Eugenie talking. I think that uh, agricultural enterprises are exempt from the VOSHA regs. We, we did have some, a VOSHA person come out to do a walkthrough at one point, but I don't think it was required. Great. Great. But Pooh, we'll see if we can find you a template if that's what you're looking for. A uh, little bit of chance to uh, pipe up after when we're sharing. Okay, let's move right on. Um, to Lisa, if you will, thanks for joining us from Mighty Food Farm, also in Shaftesbury. I'm not really sure how this happened, but we got like the Route 7 corridor and this sort of Western area of the state really covered here. Thanks, Hans. 
My employee handbook is 18 pages long, so I guess I win the award for, <laughs> for all the things and all the things that I could probably edit out. Um, but I do love details, so. <laughs> um, so I'm Lisa McDougall. I run Mighty Food Farm in Shaftesbury, Vermont. Um, I have five full season people that work 12 months a year, and then we hire in three to four additional people folks um for seasonal summer work when the workload is heavy um and then i also uh for the record just have a bookkeeper um a farmer's market person and somebody who runs the on-farm csa pickups so next slide hans i guess first is like why have a handbook um to me it's like kind of a non-negotiable uh you plan your crops with a lot of detail um and so i think you need to sort of organize your labor force and your ideas and expectations around labor um, with the same um, motivation. It's really important to have clarity on wages, raises, bonuses, time off, um, your training process, all of those things. Um, it's important to have your expectations also for, I, I believe, work ethic clearly laid out um, and also in general, a work, a um, an employee handbook helps to avoid, in my mind, uh, any future problems. We all want to avoid problems as much as possible, um, both legal or interpersonal, um, can mitigate confusion. Um, I also think it's important to, during my hiring process, um, I always email uh, potential new hires uh, the copy of our handbook so they can look over it um, and then see if sort of if they can get through the 18 pages and maybe they will be uh, willing to work for me. Um, and then also see if sort of it gives out a vibe. And so you can see if um, you're going to align perhaps with that with that work workplace. Um, so what's in my handbook? Um, the first one up there is the farm core values. So um, that's a great exercise to go through in addition to um, your mission statement. Um, so we have 10 core values and those are, I believe on like page two or three of the handbook, um, such things as professionalism or attention to detail, um, punctuality, sort of things like that. Punctuality isn't really a core value, but I believe it's sort of wired in there. Um, so that's like not, necessarily a so common thing you might see. Um, another um, thing that has been mentioned yet is I also have a, a feedback, um, it's sort of like a feedback handout um, regarding if crew members need to have a feedback conversation with each other, sort of um, where they can sort of work through any sort of complication or problem that may arise, um, sort of conflict resolution. I have a little bit of a blurb in there for people to reference. Um, I also have work expectations. Um, people are expected to be on time. We don't sit on our butt in the field, just sort of like, you don't have to work like a dog, but we ask you to, um, pay attention to the task at hand. Um, and then also there's like all the other things. And if people would like, I can email them the entire index that I have for my handbook, which is like all the things that are incorporated and that's, you know, wages, vacation time, sick time, jury duty, at will employment, um, sexual harassment policy, phone policies. Um, we do have our um, our firing policy in there with, you know, one verbal warning, two verbal warning. Um, so that's clearly spelled out. Uh, we also conduct exit interviews upon employees leaving, which has proven to be um, a valuable source of um you know, employee um, experience information. Um, what else? Um, I love Eugenie's idea of including um, a food safety, food quality um, um, section in there. And then also I liked Hank's idea of what are you telling your employees all the time to throw that in there also. Um, so important ways that my handbook has helped my team. Um, transparency is super important. Um, people really need to know like 
as Hank said, you know, when they're getting paid, how much. Um, I have definitions of a full season and a seasonal crew and a part-time crew. And, you know, I offer sort of different benefits for, for each of those, um, for each of those folks. Um, again, I send it out to new hires so they can read through it. Um, I also use it for my own reference. Um, like for when somebody when people are supposed to get a raise or, uh, we give out, uh, crew gear stipends. Um, and it's just a, prof it's just creates, um, a next level of professionalism in my idea. Um, so also too, we have a preseason meeting, um, every year, usually it is the first Saturday in March. We do that via zoom with all potential, with all the new hires and all the current crew. And during that meeting, that is when I actually, um, read out loud the, um, the employee handbook to everybody. So, um, and that way I know that everybody has heard everything and that there's no, um, sort of room for error. Um, so that's just something that I do because that's the kind of person I am. Um, let's see. Um, advice for girls on writing a handbook, be detailed and concise. Perhaps I could work on the concise, um, aspect, but there's a lot of detail. Um, there should also be, uh, no ambiguity, like, uh, policies, handbooks, they're like black and white. So everything should be really clear. Um, and there's always a copy on hand for my crew in the, um, in the employee break area. Um, so they can always reference it. Um, and I think that if you are, um, just starting to write the handbook, if you have a couple core, uh, team members, um, I would suggest maybe sort of once you get a draft of your handbook written, sharing it with them so that they, if they have any additions or, um, you know, feedback, they can help you out with that. And I think that that's, that's most of the, that's most of it. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lisa. Um, did you, we love clarity, this slide. I, there's a couple more slides here, but I, I want to, any chat? questions that was great by the way yeah who wrote it um it is important to document every warning and explanation given to an employee oh i see it's not a question it's a comment thank you Pooh. um preferably in the company of a third person um and in the event the fired employee takes it to the state labor board uh so this is a, a you know a precaution precautionary probably really good idea especially i bet who you've had some experience with that <laughs> imagine it would be a good story and uh, lisa writes would you be willing to share all 18 pages of your handbook yeah i would and just you know um and just in doing that um just be sure to still take the effort to create your own you know certainly to you know, make it your own, even if you use some of the template thing. Yeah. I think I've seen that in produce safety plans, so like a disaster if someone just like takes this thing and, you know, it's a long document and then they like add a few words to it and then they put it on a shelf. It's like, it's like, it's blasphemy as far as I'm concerned. Okay, let's move on. Uh, uh, I think Krista had a question there. Um, so we cover, um, so basically I give folks on April 1st and September 1st, um, people get um, my full season crew, which is defined in the, the handbook, um, people get 150 bucks. So full season crew get $300 a year to buy what they need, uh, boots, socks, uh, you know, whatever. I, you know, give them ideas and then just as like um, standard, hiring everybody just gets a pair of uh bibbies you know rubber bibs and a rain jacket well talk about professionalism like it, it uh, that that must give a vibe i can imagine yeah those items are expensed yeah okay is there anything else before we open it up here actually i mean it's sort of so let's actually jump. This is good timing because we are at this point, um, we're going to transition uh, to the group. Oh, happy to chat. That's great. Thank you. 
Lisa. And thanks so much, all of the panel, um, all of you for joining and sharing a little bit of your handbook stories and what's in them, how they've helped. Um, and one thing, you know, is just kind of clear to me listening to this, but also thinking about it. And, you know, Vern and I were chatting about this and all the conversations I've had around labor stuff. So labor is like a huge, right? So it's probably one of the biggest concerns. I think top top two, I can't remember who was first or second of the veteran berry growers that uh, responded to that survey a couple of years back of, of just it really being a source of stress. And so this, you know, if you're creating a handbook, it is going to help in some way, uh, definitely. And one of the things that has come out in all the things you've said is that this thing is your perspective really is behind this handbook. You've got to make it your own. And, and there is sort of a two lane highway here and you need both of them, right? Like it, and that's, that's my read. It's like, you're, you're both cultivating and, and expecting the best of your team and somehow having policies that will support that. But you're also preparing um, uh, for and preventing the worst. I mean, that and that, again, is a maybe Pooh's comment and and uh, some of the rules and firing policy and all of this stuff that's kind of behind. You're just setting up to to both prevent this from happening, but also deal with issues when they come up. So I want to stop here, open it to the to up to everyone, and I would love to have everyone share as much as possible for the next um, 10, 12 minutes, approximately. One minute each is what we're shooting for, and I'd love to, um, if possible, um, if you can turn on your video, and what I would love is for the growers in the room here to share, and especially... <laughs> Well, I, I would say any any of you, uh, but the question, oh, I, I actually got rid of the question, which is, the question is, uh, if there's one thing that you would like to uh, include or improve and have in an employee handbook, like what's one item that pops up, like something you would like to improve uh, that that could go into employee handbook that it could support, it could be a policy, it could be an area, um, of concern, uh, what is, what's a what's a major issue? Um, just share in a minute, and we'll go around and with the growers. Uh, I, hopefully, everyone has something. <laughs> I would think. Um, is there one thing you would like to improve that could go in an employee handbook? So Becky put it put it there, and um, I can. Let's see. I'll I'll go ahead and call people just on on my screen. Although this gets kind of hard because it shifts around. So. Maybe um, Becky, you could be my uh, just help out here a little bit as well if I if I'm missing someone. Um, so I do see Pooh uh, as the first on the top part of my screen. So uh, yeah, what what's uh, you're probably one of the more experienced people in this in this room. Um, and let's see if you actually have something you would like to improve at this point. <laughs> Maybe you figured it all out. <laughs> I, I think it's something you just have to, uh, I'm like, I like Hank, I think you just have to review it every year. There's things that come up, uh, you know, the, the sexual harassment thing, um, trying to give clarity to that, what that means in the workforce. Um, but other than that, no, I really have to go back through mine. And as I indicated earlier, we, we're we we're held to a state, a state mandated uh, safety plan as well. So there's a lot of training that has to go on um, uh, every year, worker protection standard, FISMA, um, the employee manual is the one thing that that is important. I think to make your own and 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 deal with what your expectations are, uh, what people can get in trouble with, and and what's germane to your farm. I mean, we make a thing about health issues, ticks, looking out for ticks and sunburn. So, I mean, that's that's really all I got to contribute. Thanks, Boo. That's great. Becky, do you want to share anything from, from your farm, Cedar Circle? I mean, uh, singing cedars? Well, I'd say I just, I have a lot to learn from everybody who just spoke. I, I mean, I think the clarity is something we could really improve upon. And I think having like one kind of, whether it's point person or resource for that is important instead of having a couple different people communicating things to the crew. And I think a good handbook would help with that. Uh, let's see, Elizabeth. Yeah, hi, thanks. This has been really great. Um, 
I think for me, my my handbook needs to be edited to take into consideration um, the num the increase in part time employees that we've had. We've sort of strayed away from just having all you know, either apprentices or full-time employees. And so in my, um, you know, being flexible with folks, I have a lot more part-time, more, more part-timers. So I need to make it reflect that. And in that wanting to be really clear, I've been fairly just, um, I guess, flexible about time off. And I need to have that be a little bit more clear. I forgot to say this, but if you just say your name and the farm you're coming from uh, when you start your share. So, Elizabeth, I don't actually know where. where yeah, you're no problem. Yeah. So, Elizabeth Keene from Indian Line Farm in South Egremont, Mass. Julie, you're next. I'm mostly here just to listen. Uh, our farm's in transition, so we don't have employees. So, information for the future. Right. So, <clears throat> Berry Creek Farm in uh, Westfield, uh, Vermont. Uh, we don't have a handbook. Uh, what? Yeah, not yet. Not yet, yeah. <laughs> and uh, most of who help her, uh, worker, are friends. So we talk a lot, uh, either during the winter or uh, at work. Our main concern now is more about safety. And I can surprise that New Hampshire has a rule to have a safety plan versus not Vermont. Um, so the life free or death in New Hampshire, they will not require this, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. No, now, yeah, for more concern, make sure the safety is important. Yeah. Thanks, Jared. And yeah. I, I'm, if you could be in the plan, you know, you could put some basics in there if it wasn't required, I would imagine. Um, we do have a, a, a two or three series, workshop series coming up to write, um, actually, with a peer group, write handbooks or do a major modification of a handbook. So I'll be sending out more information on that. And this this uh, little form here would allow you to to at least put your contact in so I can tell you more details about that. And uh, we'll also send out other resources if you're interested. Uh, all right, so I'll stop there and uh, miss, let's go to Missy. Hi, uh, Missy, Old Friends Farm in Amherst, Mass. Um, I appreciate everyone giving this attention. I definitely find it very valuable to have. And our big things that we're adding this year are, um, we had um, days where the wildflower, uh, wildfire smoke was very strong. And so we just like need some guidance with that. And then there were um, we have a lightning policy, but then there was this like ongoing thunder for days issue that was going on this summer too. So I think, you know, I don't know how we will ever contain it more than just like, hey, here are some facts. Um, but what we need to add is like some nuance of like the dynamics of when people are choosing for their own safety and what that does as far as the load and power dynamics within the crew. So I think, uh, I'm hoping that just kind of putting those things out on the table kind of helps the people that need to be more cautious for their own comfort level can be, be that way and not feel like they're putting more on others and then the others that are okay with it, um, with heading out when it's just thundering all the time um, they're not feeling like a pressure of taking on more than what, I don't know. That's, that's the spaghetti pile. Wow. Missy, I think that's a huge topic that is not just related to thunders. Probably there's a many other things that, that could apply to, and probably really important. Um, uh, I would encourage, instead of having a full discussion here, given the time, we will have more opportunities to dig in this stuff. I think the peer support on this is like essential. If you could drop anything in the chat, um, if you have dealt with that, um, that would be great. So Missy could at least see that. And then I will try to follow up, especially in our peer group working sessions with some discussions on that kind of stuff, because I think that's really nuanced and important. Lisa, let's move on to you. Okay, my name is Lisa. I'm from Wild Work Farm in uh, Keene, New York. Um, 
I started with like a handbook from the Agricultural Justice Project and have kind of just been like amending it over the years. But um, Lisa, it sounds like we have similar styles. So I was curious to see um, what yours looks like. And specifically, um, I've struggled as my business has evolved to come up with different compensation policies for different types of employees, different classes of employees. So like what Lisa was talking about in relation to um, time off, um, gear stipends, other any other benefits that employees are getting, I kind of feel like I need to standardize what that means, how many hours you need to work to get this certain benefit or how many months of the year you need to work. And then um, what Missy was just saying about the lightning policy and the wildfire policy. Yeah, that stuff definitely was big this year. And I I don't have any answers for that, but that would that's definitely something I need to add. Great. Thanks, Lissa. Uh, so we're we're uh, we are pushing up against our time here, but let's try to hit at least I would love to get everyone. Um, so just a you know one quick comment. So we've got Pauline, Brady. Krista, Field Production, Kenny, and Steven. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it in like four minutes. <laughs> uh, so Pauline, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Pauline Stevens from Golden Russet Farm in Shoreham. Um, and I think uh, both what Lissa and Elizabeth just mentioned really um, resonated with me. Uh, similar to Elizabeth, we've had a lot of, our staff has really shifted kind of from a mostly full-time crew to a lot of part-time um, people now over the last couple of years. And I think just really making sure we're being really thorough and complete on um, explaining what, you know, start end dates are, vacation policies, um, all of that. I think we could really clean that up a bit. Great. Hi, uh, I'm Brady. I have Morning Dew Farm over in Newcastle, Maine. Uh, we do have an employee handbook. We're not very diligent about sharing it. One thing that we encountered last year that we're talking over this year was an employee who took a leave of absence for mental health. And one of the hardest parts of navigating that was reintegrating them afterwards with respect to where they were in their recovery. Um, so we're trying to gather resources around establishing a protocol so it's not um, constantly putting somebody on the spot about navigating that themselves yeah this is another one where i think just the nuance and peer group support would be really helpful so krista hi um i'm not going to start my video because my connection is poor so you may not catch all of what i'm saying um but um i just wanted to state that i um i took a lot of what i started our handbook with from hank so thank you hank um and one of the aspects of his handbook that I really appreciated was the talk about the culture of the farm. And I thought that was really important, especially when you um, have people from different cultures there who aren't, you know, all like grown up in Vermont or from New England or, you know, so um, whether they're from another country through the H2A program or from another part of the country, um, just a discussion about the culture of the workplace and the personal interactions and what you're expecting and how to, um, how to understand each other's cultures, basically, uh, that openness early on in the season or in the in the uh, hiring process, um, I found really beneficial. Um, I will second what Lisa said, too, to read your handbook to everyone. Um, that also I found is really important because they're not all going to read it. It's just people don't read that far into anything anymore um, unless it's really interesting to them. And yeah, most of the legalities of hiring and working are not that interesting to most people. <laughs> so uh, I encourage you to read it to everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Krista. And yeah, just, it takes a village that just came up to me. Like this is this kind of, so much of this nuance and depth is, it really helps to have a lot of sharing. Um, so I'm appreciating this in the in this meeting. Uh, field, field production, I don't know who you are, but really quick share. And then let's, uh, Let's head um, on to the uh, Farm Labor Dashboard and Beth is gonna give us a little whirlwind, whirlwind tour of uh, this resource, which is awesome. Field production, whoever you are, and going once, going twice. Beth, you're on. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you could share Beth, that would be great. I don't know if field production comes in, but we'll, we'll move on. You might be muted, let's see, where are you? Beth? Okay. I'm unmuted. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't done this in a while. Um, can you tell me what you're seeing? Are you seeing 
There you go. That's great. Presenter view. You look very professional. Okay. Are you seeing my notes or are you just seeing the... Just you and the... and then. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so thanks for having me and great presentations and discussion. Um, I'm Beth Holtzman. I am the director of the Farm Labor Dashboard Project, um, which as um, the slide says, it provides tips, tools, and techniques to help medium and small farms effectively recruit, hire, and retain workers. There's our acknowledgement. Um, I want to quickly, so the, the dashboard has um, a number of tools in a resource library. I'm, I was going to take you on a really quick tour. I'm aware that we're almost at the end of the session. So um, we have these um, four tools. There's a self-assessment tool, um, a employee cost estimator, which um, allows you to figure out the full cost of um, your employees, including things like housing um, and workers' comp, any other kinds of things that may go into beyond wages. Um, there's a job description generator, and um, the two that I was going to focus on today was our personal policy generator, which is the employee handbook um, generator, and the resources. I just want to point out, when you go to the site, um, you'll have the option to, if you, if you go to the site, you'll have the option to log in, but you don't have to. Um, you can use the site without logging in, and you'll have full access to the tools and resources, but to save your work, um, you must download it to your computer. If you create an account and log in, um, you'll get all the same access, but you'll also have the ability to save your work and return and complete it at your convenience. Um, and um, for things like developing an employee manual, that can be um, uh, you know, better done, I think, in more smaller chunks than trying to go from scratch to the whole thing in one sitting. Um, so there's the login. We're focusing on the employee policy generator. Um, the generator just has, um, it has 12 sections that cover farm employment topics, um, many of which are exactly what um, you all have talked about. And actually, um, we drew from um, information and feedback from many of you who are here in the room today. And I really appreciate your input in helping us put this together. Um, the sections and topics, there's 12 of them right now. I think we might be adding a couple more based on what some of the things that you said today. Um, we have some flexibility to do that. There's the first set, there's the second set. Um, here's an example of what um, within um, the hours and scheduling, um, we have example language, which you can cut and paste and then edit to what works for your farm, or you could take it from an existing document. You can cut and paste in and edit it. There's no word limit. You can go as long as you want. I wouldn't recommend being really wordy, um, but there's um, it's completely adaptable to what you need. Um, at the end, um, you would save it and you have the option to download it. Just quickly, the resource library um, is, um, you're able to search um, using filters, here are current filters um, on some um, what we think are some key um, employment related topics. Um, and here's what like an example resource might look like. Um, I happen to search for this one um, on hiring and recruiting employees and specifically on recruiting. So um, and what came up was the self study package, which has um, some text, some um, informational material. Um, a, Brief excerpt is on the left. The right has a whole series of resources that you can use to help actually implement um, that kind of knowledge on your farm. And um, with that, I'm gonna to go to questions. I have one thing to tell you, which is we are 95% of the way through a pretty significant upgrade to the site. So what's actually available now is gonna change um, by the end of next week. So I would recommend if you're interested in the site, waiting until next week when um, hopefully Hans will send you an email that says go to the new site if you're interested and I am always willing to coach and help people through take suggestions yeah and that's it and with that I'm going to go to Hans's um, last slide <clears throat> thanks so um, much that was that was fabulous and we are just going to be perfect on time because I am done uh, thank you all for coming so again thank you all and um, people will just be fading out here, but I'm going to officially call an end to this and uh, that'd be great.